Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. My name is Christopher Moldong, and I am an author. Today, I will read pages 5 to 9 of my horror short story, Shattered Glass, which will also conclude this story. Uh, I am warning you right now that this story is not for children. Next week, I will read a fantasy story, The Wizard, The Shadow, and the Tree, pages 1 through 3. That one is actually for children or older. Um, you can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldong.com. If you have an e-reader, you can buy my works on Amazon.com or a PDF copy on my website, starting with my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99. Also, for $1.99, you can buy my short stories and short story collections, starting with the fantasy horror short story, The Land of the Wooden Statues. Then there's the horror collection, which has this story in it. And uh, it's a compilation of three of my gothic horror short stories. And the fantasy fable collection, which is a compilation of four of my fantasy fable short stories. Uh, check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be, be provided on the description. Uh, if you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube, SoundCloud, or Podbean. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're on YouTube or follow this, this channel on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Podbean. Let's get started and we'll pick up where we left off. There are some things that you must do first in order to prove that you are worthy of entering our land. Now, just go back to your house and you will be given instructions on what to do next. Glasgow tells her in her head. Downtrodden. She walks through damp ground back to her house. Dragging mud onto the porch, she slowly opens the front door only to find her drunken father slouching on the couch. Dazed, he opens his eyes and sees the mud that Crystal is bringing into the house. Where the hell have you been, you dirty little brat? Where do you... How dare you come into this clean place and get it all dirty? He gets up and stomps the ground as he approaches his daughter. He grabs her by her hair and forces her head to the ground. See this? I pay for all of it. He actually inherited the house from his father and does not have a job. Now, you force me to do things that I don't want to do, but you need to learn a little discipline and respect. He picks Crystal up by her hair and lifts her free hand to slap her. However, she wiggles out of his grip and runs away. Chasing after her, he bumps into tables, crashes into the wall, and knocks a mirror to the floor. The breaking glass scares her, and she quickly, quickly runs up the stairs like a terrified rabbit being hunted by a predator. With her father's equilibrium compromised from alcohol, he trips and hits his head on the bottom staircase. After hearing a loud thump, she looks back only to see him lying with his body on the ground unconscious. Now is the time to act, Crystal. He is a threat to you being able to reach our lands. You must dispose of him before he wakes up, the voice of Glasgow says in, his, in her head. Looking like little sparkles, pieces of glass linger on the old wooden floor next to her father's body. Some have found their way onto his clothes, skin, and hair with a particularly long and sharp piece sitting next to his leg. Crystal carefully walks down the stairs and around her father's body to pick it up. Shining in her hand, she remembers her doppelganger that she saw at school and cries at the thought of seeing her head stabbed with a large piece of glass. With tears still flowing down her face, she smiles at the sight of her father lying still and helpless. She raises the piece of mirror with one hand and sends it down onto the back of her father's head. It passes through his brain and ends through his right eye. What is all that noise? Her mother asks as she comes out of the master bedroom. Horrified, she sees her husband's dead body on the floor with the murder weapons still stuck to his head. With one hand over her mouth in disbelief, she cries to her daughter, What have you done? He may have done something bad, but he didn't deserve this. She is weak, Crystal. 
and she will only bring you ruin and tie you down. You must go to where her she must go to where her husband is. Glasgow's voice says in her head. Crystal grips the piece of Marin, swiftly pulls it out of her father's head. With blood and parts of his brain still dripping from it, she runs at her shocked mother. The large piece of glass enters through her chest and pierces her heart. Once it goes through her back, Crystal quickly pulls it out of her mother's body, and she falls forward with an eternal look of fear. Smiling, Crystal drops the weapon and notices a large gash across the inside of her hand. Stepping over her father's dead body, she washes the blood off in the kitchen sink and wraps her hand with a piece of cloth. Stepping hard on her father's back, she goes upstairs to her room. Checking the time from a small clock in a room next to an open bottle of pills, Crystal feels a burning sensation from the gash on her hand. Not even close to midnight, she walks up to the antique mirror and stares at it. As if watching a movie screen, she sees her doppelganger playing in a field of white flowers mixed with blood-red roses. She runs about blissfully while thorns cause her legs to bleed, staining the white flowers red. The doppelganger sees Crystal and stops playing. Standing still with her brown eyes never leaving Crystal, she points to her right. Crystal looks to where she pointed and sees Glasgow stuck into the wall. You have done well so far. Any obstacle stopping you from entering our world is gone. Tomorrow night, the bridge that connects your world to ours will appear. I would advise you to go about your everyday routine, but just make sure to be at the cliff tomorrow night, Glasgow tells her. Glasgow, what is your world like, she asks in wonder. You have already peeked into it, and what you see is how it is. The next day, Crystal walks downstairs to the permeating smell of rotting flesh. She steps over her father's corpse and heads into the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal. Sitting down alone, she looks at the bodies of her parents and gets a large knife from a cabinet. Cutting off their fly and maggot-ridden head, she places them on opposite ends of the breakfast table facing each other. Isn't this nice? My whole family is together eating in peace and quiet. Her voice rises with obvious anger. No drinking at all hours of the day, and no one defending every stupid thing that he does. She finishes her cereal and gulps down the milk. Wiping away any spilled milk off her mouth, she serenely looks at the heads of her parents. I'm glad that we got to have this last meal before I go to the other world. With a euphoric smile on her face, she looks at her father and mother. Oh, didn't I tell you? I've been chosen to be with these people from another world. I've never felt so special in my life. As Crystal happily walks to school, she looks at the windows of different houses. She sees white silhouettes of skulls and various faces and masks imposed on the glass. Smiling strangely as if something good has happened, the other students walking by speak in whispers while avoiding her. In her classroom, she sits in her usual seat next to the window. Throughout the class, the dog-like face that she saw yesterday from the same window stares at her with nothing but darkness in the background. Sporadically, she looks around slowly and deliberately with a smile on her face, and everyone in class sees it but it ignores her. After class, Crystal walks home alone with white faces staring at her from every window that she passes by. Walking faster towards the trees near her house, she starts to skip while getting strange looks from onlookers. Crystal, tonight is when you will enter our world. The faces have guided you to this point, and they are watching to see that you, you do not stray from the correct path, Glasgow's voice tells her in her head. Right before the small forest, she stops and stares at the trees as if she could see the cliff beyond them. She runs with a childish joy as she races through the vegetation and quickly ends up at the cliff. Disappointed that the bridge has not appeared yet, she paces back and forth while muttering to herself. Getting tired from the excitement and anxiety, she falls asleep against a tree. In a dream, Crystal sits on an old wooden chair in front of a rectangular table with the top made of glass. Her doppelganger sits opposite of her while her father sits to the right and her mother sits to the left. Both sit emotionless on their seats looking forward into space. Her doppelganger asks, How is this, Crystal? Is it everything that you ever wanted? 
She looks at Crystal's mother and father. To me, this is boring. My world is not so mundane as to live in some old, decrepit house. There are no alcoholics and enablers, but special people like you. I don't want you even thinking about this place when you reach our land. The glass from the table cracks and bursts into pieces. Her parents' heads fall off their necks and roll onto the floor. Quickly, their, body, their bodies and heads shrivel and decay into a grayish color. With both still seated and facing each other, Crystal's doppelganger tells her, You have no ties to this world anymore, Crystal. You didn't hesitate to rid yourself of your parents, so I don't want you to hesitate when the bridge appears. When she wakes up, the moon emits its light and the crystal bridge forms. It begins at the edge of the cliff and leads deep into the horizon. Her black-haired and brown-eyed doppelganger appears at the foot of the bridge and reaches out her left hand. Crystal climbing over the wooden railing and standing at the very edge of the cliff, looks down and sees various cars driving by on the road below. She then looks backwards at the trees towards the direction of her house. After a sigh, she grabs her doppelganger's hand with her own and takes a step forward. That's all for today, and uh, that's pretty much the end of uh, Shattered Glass. Uh, if you like this, subscribe to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow this channel if you are on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Podbean. Thank you for listening to this reading. Next week I will read The Wizard, The Shadow, and the Tree, pages 1 through 3. Uh, here is the synopsis. A dark shadow speaks to Ladam and Ava in a dream. He tells them of a tree with fruit that can cure any ailment as Ava is sick with no medicine to help her. However, the tree is guarded by a wizard. Ladam travel, travels to find this tree and heal his sister. However, what he finds is not what he expected. Uh, also, check out my manga reviews for Nagima Volumes 17 through 20, and next week, Volumes 21 through 24. Uh, thank you, and until next time.